See, he believes that he can do anything he wants. And we now see some people floating the idea of impeachment. Essentially, nobody, even the Democrats, are not backing up Obama for the most part. He's starting to get some of his administration people to back him up. But even, and of course, Harry Reid backs him up, says, uh, no, he doesn't have a 30-day requirement. It's clearly written in the law that he has to give a 30-day notice about this. It has to be talked about, discussed. He did not follow that. Jonathan Turley and others have pointed out that he clearly broke the law. There is no wiggle room on that. And now the question is, are they going to do anything about it? But let's look at some of the apologists first. We've got a clip from Hegel. Let's listen to what he had to say. There's a lot of classified information in, in how we got him out, when we got him out, methods used. These are, these are important classified uh, documents. Now, we're, we're sharing these things, by the way, in classified forums. Uh, with appropriate committees. To your bigger question, why now? Uh, it was our judgment, based on the information that we had, that his life, his health, uh, were uh, in peril. And, uh, imminently? Well, when you say imminently, it's easy for us to sit here and look behind and say, well, 24 hours, 48 hours. Uh, it was our judgment, and it was unanimous, by the way, I might add. It was the Secretary of Defense, Secretary of State, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Director of National Intelligence, Attorney General. Yeah. It all came, we all came Look, to the same conclusion. Well, we, you know what? We hear this over and over again. Well, you know, you really just have to trust us on this because this is national security. I, I would like to tell you really what the basis of this is, but I can't really. Remember when we had the confirmation hearings for the judge that uh, was going, that is one level below the Supreme Court, a lifetime judge appointment, and yet this guy had written memos that supposedly gave legal justification to the drone assassination program. But of course, in all these years, nobody was able to look at those legal memos. When Rand Paul and others started to make an issue out of that, that this guy had written secret memos to essentially assassinate American citizens abroad, justifying that presumably with some legal argument, they said, well, you know, you're going to appoint him to uh, a very high court position, a lifetime appointment. Let's see what this guy's legal arguments are. And they wouldn't even release it to the Senate for a while. Finally, they released it to the Senate. We still have not seen those justifications to the public. So we always see that they're going to uh, pull the State Secret Act. That's something that goes all the way down whenever you go in and even talk to somebody at a local police station. Oh, I, I can't comment on that. It, that's, you know, that's confidential. Nobody in government will tell us anything. The entire government is being run like a star chamber. And frankly, I'm sick of it. We need to start, we need to stop this. And on this one year anniversary of the Snowden documents, as people are debating, you know, whether he, we see Newt Gingrich talking about, is, is Snowden a traitor? And we see a Democrat say, no, he's not necessarily a traitor. He's just a criminal that needs to go to jail. Look, he exposed criminal actions that are being taken by people in government. We need to stop having a star chamber government. It's just metastasizing. But this is the comment from Obama today. He said, we saw an opportunity and we seized it. I make no apologies for that. Well, when Jonathan Turley went on the Sean Hannity show, remember he was on CNN earlier this week talking to Wolf Blitzer, and Wolf Blitzer was kind of surprised when he said, well, you know, did the president violate the law? And he said, clearly he did. There isn't any wiggle room with this 30-day requirement. This is the comment that uh, Turley had on the Sean Hannity show. He said, what's emerging is an imperial presidency, an uber presidency, as I've called it, where the president can act unilaterally. This is only the latest example of that. Absolutely, this is happening all the time, even with his own Obamacare regulations. He gets his system put in, and even that is constantly adjusted as if he is dictator-in-chief. Now, Turley goes on to say, people don't seem to understand that the separation of powers is not about the power of these branches. In other words, I don't really care fundamentally if the president is more powerful than the Supreme Court or the legislature, it's really, as he said, there to protect individual liberty. It's there to protect us from the concentration of power. And we need to remember that the divisions and the separations of power were not initially just between the branches of the federal government. There was also a separation of power between the federal government, the state governments, and the people. They feared 
pow concentration of power so much, and they feared that it would happen in the central branch so much, that they divided that power between the states and the people, and then within the central government, they divided it into three pieces. We're going to be right back. We're going to talk about Obama getting his Nixon on. Stay with us. How long would you last if all grocery stores cease to exist? Not in America. This can't happen in America. Because of my concern about our government, I was looking at survival stuff. I was raised as a Girl Scout, and their motto was to be prepared. Food for Patriots was an opportunity for me to be able to put some things aside. I said, well, this is a product worth having, seeing as it's so good. Like the pricing for what I got. I like the containers they were shipped in. If they keep in touch with you, you get your emails, you get your confirmations. The customer service is just absolutely fantastic. Plan on buying probably about uh, four more of these minimum. And it just came so quick. It came right when they said it would come. Thanks for supplying all this stuff for us because I think we're all going to be needing it in a very short time. Join over 50,000 Americans who have trusted food for patriots. Go to GetSurvivalFood.com to learn more. That's GetSurvivalFood.com. It's been said, those who control the food control the people. Are you concerned about GMO foods making you sick and affecting your mind? Many people suffer from lack of energy, insomnia, loss of stamina, weight gain, and the inability to think clearly. Genetically modified crops, processed foods, and toxic chemicals can compromise your health and are silently destroying your digestive system, which accounts for 80% of your immune system. Take back control of your health with Pro-EM1 Probiotic from Terraganics. Pro-EM1 Probiotic helps protect your body against irritable bowel syndrome, constipation, Crohn's disease, celiac disease, diabetes, the common cold, and much more. And including a powerful probiotic like Pro-EM1 as part of your daily routine puts you back in control and prevents you from becoming a mindless zombie manipulated by the pharmaceutical and GMO agendas. Call Terraganics at 866-369-3678 or visit Terraganics.com. T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Edward Grew. It took me 20 years of searching the globe to find the deposit of the highest purity iodine available. The new Survival Shield X2 is mined from 7 to 10,000 feet below the earth in pristine, environmentally clean conditions. The iodine crystals we use are extracted from an ancient 300 million plus year old deposit deep in the earth. It's the strongest nascent iodine on the market today. It delivers 650 micrograms per drop. Experience the new formula. Experience the ancient purity. Shield your family. Survival Shield X2, available now at InfoWarsLife.com. X2 from InfoWarsLife.com or call toll free 888-253-3139. Are you happy doing your laundry with perfume detergents that irritate your skin? Are you happy washing your hands with stinking fragrances that gives your skin rashes? Are you happy paying new, higher prices for smaller boxes? Find your happiness today with our one to four year supply of pure soaps or our one to two month sampler with bar soap, shampoo, laundry, and dish soap at fivestarsoap.com. You deserve the best. Happiness is fivestarsoap.com. Attention all radio listeners. Survival Life is giving away free credit card knives exclusively to our radio listeners. Visit FreeCovertKnife.com to see this covert knife in action and to claim yours free. It's the same knife you've seen in airline magazines for $29.95. But today, it's yours free. Just pay shipping and handling. Go to FreeCovertKnife.com. Go now. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight on this Thursday, June 5th, 2014. One year after the first documents from Edward Snowden surfaced, what it told us was not just that we had one agency that was violating the law, but we have seen in the year that has passed as people have come after Snowden as a criminal for exposing what the 
government was doing and that was criminal as they have instead of reforming government instead of going after the people who are violating their oaths they've gone after ed snowden what we see is a government that embraces the secret surveillance state we've seen how pervasive that is how it goes from the top to the bottom of the government as we see that every part of government from the white house down to local police departments don't believe that not only are they not not accountable to anyone but they don't have to even give us any information about what we're doing to me that is the core thing that we're seeing here it's an arrogance against the people to say that they are not accountable to the constitution and they are not accountable to the people and we see that in what Obama is doing. He doesn't believe that he's accountable to the law, to the Constitution, to the people, to anything. And we now see people from both the left and the right who are criticizing him for this. And we have Jonathan Turley, who was on Sean Hannity. I was just reading that quote where he said, people don't seem to understand that the separation of powers is not about the power of these branches. It's there to protect individual liberty. It's there to protect us from the concentration of power. He says, you know, I've said it before, Barack Obama is really the president that Richard Nixon always wanted to be. You know, he's been allowed to act unilaterally in a way that we've been fighting for decades. See, when you separate power between the central government and the states and the people, as was the original design, as you separate power between these different branches in government, that those are just merely tactics, the real target is individual liberty that is the goal and we can't have that when we've got a government that has nothing but contempt for the Constitution for the rule of law now on the right George will had a essay and he pointed out that Richard Nixon famously said to David Frost when the president does it that means it's not illegal doesn't that sound like Barack Obama doesn't that sound like the presidency we have now he goes on to analyze the way that Politico explained what was going on. Politico kind of played semantics with what happened. They said that Obama's assertive act defied Congress. And Will points out, defied Congress? I thought it defied the law. That's what they're doing from the Edward Snowden documents showing that the NSA and all these different government agencies are defying the law. The Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act that was put in. Remember that that was put in in the wake of the Church Intelligence uh, Committee hearings back in the 1970s, looking at the abuses of the CIA, trying to make sure that they did not become a predatory spy agency like East Germany spying on American citizens. So they created this FISA Act. And they said, we're going to allow you to do intelligence of people that you think may be enemies of the United States abroad, but you're not going to do that here domestically. And now that has become something of a star chamber court where they can go in and without, they call the FISA court a court. It's not a court in any way, shape or form. There is one single person, a political appointee who sits there and hears one person from the government. It's not an adversarial relationship there. There's no transparency. There's no public knowledge of what's going on. And yet, as they have these secret hearings between one judge and one bureaucrat from the administration, they believe that these decisions that they come up with have the power to modify our Constitution. Those are simply head games they're playing with themselves. They're engaging in criminal actions, and we need to call them on it. And fortunately, we've seen that over and over again with these Snowden documents, people are starting to understand what's going on. The question is, will we do anything about it? The question is, will our legislative leaders do anything about Obama's criminal actions? Now, in a story up on InfoWars Today from Alexander Bolton on the Hill, we see that Lindsey Graham is warning that the Republicans might impeach Obama for what he's done, releasing these five Taliban prisoners from Gitmo without following the procedure. Do you think? This is kind of, how many times have we heard this before? We always see the Republicans come out and say, oh, this is really bad. You know, one more time, one more time, we're going to do something about it. How many times does he have to break the law before they do anything about it? Now, we're going to take your calls. I want to get your take on the Snowden events and uh, what's happened in the last year, call us on 800-259-9231. Give us your take. 
on what's happened in the last year and what you think needs to be done. Stay with us. We're on the march.